Bree and I are on our way to Repton, Alabama to check out Kent Hovind's uh, new-ish uh, dinosaur adventure land. And while we were on the way, um, we realized that we only live about a mile and a half, two miles from the original dinosaur adventure land in Pensacola. So we decided to come and check that out before we continue on our journey. Paul Agia reached out to me after he saw my Eric Hovind video where I talked about uh, creationist Christianity and stuff. And uh, he told me to just have some caution in regard to filming out in Repton. He said he's not sure if we're even allowed to. I'm bringing this camera, which looks more like a picture camera, to try and um, to see if we can. If anybody says anything, we'll have to put it away. I went to a private school for a long time and have been personally taught by both Kent Hovind and Eric Hovind uh, at my school. I was taught creationism and that evolution was stupid and terrible and all these things. I've explained in that video that I still am a Christian, I just am not so, um, not so tight held on creationism like I was taught. But anyway, uh, I'm going to show you where I went on a field trip once to this original dinosaur adventure land. And uh, it's pretty much abandoned now, but there's still some old remnants. Let's see if we can't take a look. So you can see dinosaur adventure land brochures, it's all empty now blocked off so our bus came through here and just past we can't go through obviously but we'd go over in this area and and to the left was all the dinosaur stuff and if i remember correctly there used to be like a t-rex head coming out of one of the side of the buildings i always thought it was really cool they had this little like sand pit thing where you could uh, uh actually find real fossils and stuff and i hope they are real that's what they told us in, in the third grade so unfortunately we can't actually go back and see it is private property i'm not about to get arrested for you guys we're going to keep heading out and check out the new dinosaur adventure land hopefully we don't get in trouble right, we've been driving for about an hour and 15 minutes and we are now at dinosaur adventure land a lot of stuff's going on here visitor parking that's us we're visitors we are Yep. Did you guys want to tour the science center? Uh, yeah, we've never been here before, so we just wanted to look around. And... Okay. Brianna and I signed in to be given a tour of the Creation Museum. It amounted to being shown around different individual exhibits that walk you through the six biblical days of creation. Each spot would tell the story of that day of creation and what came with it. For instance, when God created light, they argued that God created wavelengths on that day by extension. When she showed us around, each day would include a different activity. Admittedly, there were some cool things that they had, like this Tesla coil and this drum that shoots puffs of smoke. <laughs> Granted, it's all meant for children, but I still enjoy watching electricity shooting into the air. A lot of what we were shown is the exact same stuff that creationists have been talking about forever. I heard all of these arguments before growing up in my Christian school and I was both surprised and disappointed that there was nothing really new in this regard. They had this model of the flagellum motor that had been widely used by creationists to demonstrate the complexity of life on a small scale. I remember watching videos about this to teach intelligent design, which I guess since I'm still a Christian I do believe to an extent. Another thing I thought was interesting was that our tour guide brought up tree rings as a way to show dating of Earth. I only recently found out that there's an entire science behind this called dendrochronology. It becomes much more complex than just counting a ring a year. There's the factor of temperature, whether it's too hot or too wet or too cold, that change the growth and size of these rings. Apologia has a really good video about this if you're wanting to learn more, so I'll link that down below. Something that I did find particularly disturbing though was that they compared those that believe in evolution as akin to Hitler arguing that if evolution is really true, Hitler wouldn't have been technically wrong trying to get rid of lesser races. Well, a guy named Hitler believed in evolution and he said, well, if people are just animals and if evolution is true and some animals are more evolved than others and the stronger ones survive and the weaker ones stay off, why don't I help evolution along and I'm gonna kill off all the lesser races of people, he said and I'm gonna only let the stronger ones survive and then I'm gonna help evolution by killing. He killed millions of people thinking he was helping evolution along. And so evolution can be a really dangerous theory when it's taken to its end as Hitler um, did to it. We're all made in the image of God so we know it's wrong to kill people but Hitler didn't believe that, he believed in evolution. Now I, I do want to defend our tour guide here though as I think we all agree that Hitler was bad and shouldn't have killed six million Jews. She was very sweet and hospitable and made us feel really comfortable and I don't want to come off as making fun of her or what she thinks. I just fundamentally disagree with her. 
At the end of the tour, she tells us about Jesus and that he loves us and died for us. And much to the chagrin of my atheist viewers, I already believe this, but appreciate the sentiment. Ha! Got he! Lastly, she showed us some dinosaur bones and about how dinosaurs may still be alive. Like how the Loch Ness Monster is actually a plesiosaur that is still living since dinosaurs lived along with man. I was surprised that this hasn't changed since there are such strong arguments against it, considering a plesiosaur were likely cold-blooded reptiles and wouldn't live in the 42 degree Fahrenheit temperature of Loch Ness, and if it were warm-blooded, wouldn't have the required food supply at the loch. If it did live in Loch Ness, it would have to come to the surface several times a day in order to breathe. But anyway, it's still taught as being a plesiosaur here. After the tour, we were set to leave. Until... As we were heading to our car... The man. The myth. The legend himself showed up. Kent freaking Hovind. We chatted for a little bit and I prayed to God that he didn't see my video two months prior of me talking crap about his son. We told him we were heading out and he offered to give us a tour of the property. So we hopped into his little buggy and he showed us around. I was a bit nervous at first thinking he was taking me far inland to put me down Old Yeller style, but luckily I lived. He asked if we wanted to feed his goats and of course uh, we did. I kept having this weird self-awareness that I'm hanging out with Kent Hoven and feeding his goats. What the heck is happening right now? We also did this really cool thing where we stand 400 feet apart at these radio dishes and can talk to each other from really far away. It was actually pretty awesome. Hello. I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you too. <laughs> we also did these paper airplane things that I remember him showing my fourth grade class over a decade ago. So not much has really changed there. And the neater you fold your plane, the farther it will fly. By the way, the neater you do your homework, the neater you make your bed, the neater you brush your teeth, the further you go in life, because nobody wants to hire a slob to work for them. Don't be a slob or you won't get a job, okay? I was actually having a really good time, despite Kent's many, many jokes about how crappy the government is. Now this looks a lot like tape, okay, but it's $4,000 an inch to the government. Now this looks a lot like a staple, but these are $4,000 each to the government. These look very similar to jumbo paper clips from Office Depot aisle 12. No, these are $74 million each to the government. We were just hanging out and for a brief period of time I forgot about Kent Hovind, the creationist, and was just enjoying hanging out with Kent, the weird guy who hates the government. No different than your mentally unstable uncle. Sure, you're worried he might snap at any moment, but he's still family. And despite Kent's flaws and my disagreements about biblical literalism in Genesis, I really do think he has a heart for kids, and I don't fault him for that. But some more reality came back once we picked up another group of people. Once they started talking about how they moved to Repton, Alabama to be surrounded by Christians and get away from all the liberals, and began talking about conspiracy theories, I was a bit more uncomfortable. I can make you a delicious dish that is a better anti-cancer than the crap they put through the needle. I had that, oh yeah, I almost forgot these people are crazy feeling. I told the boys to feed the cows and they forgot. <laughs> <laughs> and because we had just taken on a small group, including a child, Kent decided to be more aggressive with the four-wheeling. This is real, long enough for my camera to die, so I switched to my phone. When you're going up a sand dune, you don't want to go halfway and stop and then try to start again, because your tires will just dig a hole and you'll be stuck. You want to build up speed before you get there and keep moving. You can learn a lot from a sand dune. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> just kidding. After a 40 minute ride around the property, we were ready to go and had a lot to think about. I really did enjoy it more than I thought I would, but I still felt some overall relief when we left. 
I think this served as a good reminder to me about the people behind the crazy. Yes, I think Kent Hovind is wrong about creationism and him preaching this anti-science government conspiracy stuff is incredibly dangerous and it's just the second cousin of trying to use science to prove that the earth is flat. But one thing that we do both agree on is that there is a God. Kent said at one point that he finds it so unbelievable that people can look at creation and not think that there was a creator. And honestly, again to the chagrin of my atheist viewers, I do believe that. I just don't think God used a magic wand to poof it into existence. That's never really been his style. Even biblically, God has always favored patience and taking his sweet time to do things. At the end of the day, to me, science tells us how things work and came to be. I don't know why there's such an anti-science movement in my country, and I wish that there wasn't. But science will never tell us the why of things. We can try and force it and mold it to fit, but it never will. So whether you cling to personal philosophies, other religions, or even the absence of belief, I hope that you'll not reject science. I'm still learning, and I'm not afraid to admit that. So far, I still believe in God, and I also believe in science. You can do both, and I hate that our society has made many believe that you have to choose one or the other. They're gonna tell the kids in school it took millions of years to make Grand Canyon. Yeah. It took about a week. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, these are just my feelings on it. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you comment down below, I ask that you keep it civil, even though I know some of you won't. Special thanks to Apologia for chatting with me a bit about this video, even though it feels like it took me forever to actually put it together. His channel has taught me quite a few things, so I highly recommend it. Although I'm still devoutly Christian after watching, so sorry if you haven't converted me to atheism yet. <laughs> anyway, as always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll catch you in my next video. Take care. No. Hey, I appreciate it a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you up when so you're much. Okay. All right, thank you. We'll go, we'll go to the next one. All right, that's it. Oh, let's go out of the room.